Right, um, Mrs. Cook, uh, thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed for the Remembering Rodborough project. I have a series of questions that I aren't ask of people, uh, but by all means just wander from the point wherever your memory takes you. So my first question is, can you remember your first connection to Robra? Or your first memory of Robra? We're living at the top of the hill, just below the, the Prince Albert, and we came there when I was seven to live there and it was a little sweet shop below the it was two it's a big cottage now but originally it was two cottages and there was a Mrs Wyman that kept this shop and we lived in the next one and I lived there for I think about three years okay so that would be I'm just guessing um just from up. 19 14 to about 1920, I think, roughly 20. And, and have you any memories of that, that early stage in your life, being at the shop? Oh, yes, it was lovely. Mrs. Wyman was lovely, you know, be a lovely person. Yeah. Um, oh, I can't go into no. all these details no. I remember about that Carry because on, it's yeah. a bit personal. I okay. mean, all right. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. Um, then, yeah. But jo George Gardiner. We remember, so it makes sense to me now. He talks about going up to the shop called Cooks. So that that was you then, presumably, or your parents. Well, it may have been. Yes. Yeah, it <laughs> must have been. He called it Cooks yeah. shop. Yeah, he remembers going up. Uh, no, that it, th this is Mrs. Wyman that had the shop oh, first, okay. and then the Cooks had it afterwards. But they were no relation to me. Oh, that's just a coincidence. Of yeah, they, yes. Oh, that was a lot. Be. That was after I moved down here. Mrs. Cook who yeah, had the shop. Yeah, just a coincidence. Yeah. It sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so very hard to remember anything to do with the with the, the First World War or or, um, or the end of the F Great War for you, or can you remember anything? Well, of course, my father was in the First World War, very badly wounded, and at that time we were living in Leeds because oh, okay. my mother and father married and went to Leeds after their wedding. Because of the work situation, and he was a foreman in a mill in Leeds. Oh, right, yeah. Then he volunteered to go into the army. Right, he was a volunteer. Where right. he was very badly wounded. And then mother packed up and came back home because her family were all here. Right. And that's family. Yeah. So, and was your dad when he came out of hospital, um, we came and lived with my aunt and uncle at Cane's Cross when we came right. from Leeds until we got the cottage at the top of the hill. Right. And then my dad eventually came out of hospital. Right. And then... Uh, he lost his arm. He lost his arm through the... His right oh, arm through the, A lot of people, older people, would remember my father. Yeah. Was he able to work again? Well... It's it's rather it just, I don't know whether this is applicable or not, but um, in the nineteen twenties, everybody was very hard up sure. after the war, yeah. Yeah. and he couldn't do any labouring sort of yeah. work. Yeah. And there was a man that lived at the end of the road in the first house, and his right. name was Ward, and he was the owner of Ward's Coals okay. in Stroud, which were in a London road. Okay. So as I understand it, my father was desperate to do something, yeah. and he went to Mr. Ward and offered to be an agent for him, right. and he walked for miles, he used to go all around yeah. the district, and everybody was hard up in those sure. days, Absolutely. and he started a... Okay, I think yeah. it was a, a shilling a week they used to pay right, okay. to cover their coal expenses. Okay, right. They used to pay for it weekly, and Dad used to do that sort of thing. So, um, and that would be delivering um, water? No, he wasn't no, delivering no, no. it, but he was the agent for... He used to walk around and get the orders right, for different right, gotcha. people. Oh, I'm glad he got work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's an extraordinary thing, but um, my uh, grandmother... Uh, well, my gra my grand uh, sorry, my dad was born in London in 1914, but um, they moved down to Cane's Cross and and lived in um, I think it's Bridge Bridge Road or Bridge Street. So yeah, Bridge Street. Yeah. So uh, you might my my mother 
um, was uh, oh dear, you're catching me now. Um, well, Butler was 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 uh, her married name. Um, I'm just trying to remember her, uh, her uh, Bingham. They were Binghams, and there were quite a few Binghams out. Um, <coughs> Yes, I do. I, I do the girl Binghams. Oh right, yeah. Well, those those I, are I, sort of great aunts. They used to work at Hill Paul's. They could well have done, and they and, and I worked at Holloway's. Oh right, well I'm blessed. Yeah, and they then they moved to Leonard Stanley. That's I don't let, don't go down this big. All right, okay, we'll move away. <laughs> well, great. Cut that off a minute. But yeah. I went with a boy from so, Horsley. Yeah, yeah. When I was about sixteen or seventeen. Right. And then I finished with him, and then he picked up with a Bingham, oh, a Reenie right. Bingham. Reenie, yeah, Reenie was one. Reenie Bingham, and she worked at Hill Paws, and we were... Yeah. <laughs> she was my great aunt or something. Well, then right. I went with her, or she married oh, him, nice. originally. Oh, right. She, she oh. married Charlie Ind. Oh, my sister would love to, love to hear this. Yeah, she, she, um, Charlie Ind, his name was, and oh, he right. lived at Horsley. Well, I, I remember sitting on Reenie's lap, when I was a very small boy, when we used to go down to Leonard Stanley or something in the 1960s. Yeah. That's right, they uh, moved to Leonard Stanley. Well, isn't that amazing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really knew Reedy. Well, I'm blessed. Okay, that was brilliant, wasn't it? Um, now here, um, so you've told us about your first memories of Rob. It was, it was uh, quite interesting, well, it was fascinating here about the 1920s. And, um, you know, we're, we're into the Great Depression here. Um, but but your, your daughter um, talks about the rag and bone men who, who were around. Let, let's be here about well, that. Well, it, it yeah, but then that was a no normal thing. I mean, there yeah. was a lot of people who were desperate. Yeah. Yeah. So was that between the wars or after the Second World War as well, the, the rag and bone men? That was in between the wars, after the First World War, the when first. Fred and Sidney Dainty did that. Dainty, yeah. Mm. No, they weren't twins, but they were brothers, were they, the Dainties, or...? They weren't. Well, they weren't twins, you say. Were they no, twins no. Brothers, Fred perhaps? was the eldest, and Sid was the younger one. Okay. Um, the mother and father. They they were a little family that had um, disabilities right. of some sort. Yeah. I just don't remember yes. what it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know Sydney was deaf. Yes. Very yes. deaf. Yeah. And a little bit. Um, Backward, yeah. way, you know, I can't say yeah, anything I know, else. I know, I know, I know. And Fred had a sort of disability, mm -hmm. but just what his was, I don't know. Well, it's a quite a difficult question to answer now, I think, which is how do you think Robra has changed over your time here, and how is Robra different in 2009? I mean, there's so much that you could say. Very, very different. <laughs> the co op's gone. Yeah, the co op. The co op. In the hill. Well, I mean, everybody knew one another. I mean, it was a yeah. smaller area. Yeah. And I mean, I think at one time I knew everybody all the way around, all the way along the and top road and bottom road. and Everybody was stopped at Everybody, the street, yes. They were very friendly and more yeah. neighbourly. Yeah. Mm. So so the, the, the co-op, was it up the road on the, the corner? The co-op, yes, yeah, at the, the corner. Yeah. So what was that like? Um, well, it was a lovely little shop, very friendly. I mean, yeah. it... It was a different thing because when you went into a shop, you talked. Well, you go into a supermarket now and you talk to the girl on the till, of course, but not in the same way. Yeah, I bet you can't remember. You everybody, as I said, everybody knew one another. Yeah, yeah. it was a different it contact. Was a, more of a community, you think? Than it exactly. Yeah. Mm. Uh, can you remember your Debbie number? Oh, I can remember my mother's. Yeah, oh good, well done, because I asked my sister... Uh, yeah, 3740. Uh, 3740, <laughs> brilliant. Well, it, it's up to you, but I've got a, uh, a CD coming out about the history of the co-op in, in uh -huh. Stroud in Gloucestershire. So if you like, we'll, we'll have a chat mm. off, off, off the microphone. And if you like, we'll put your mother's... I mean, the TV, the when my... We, we, I was the eldest of seven... Yeah. And they used to have a dividend, didn't they, yeah, every yeah. year. Well, my mother always spent that on our shoes. Right. And we yeah. had to go up to Chapel Street in Stroud, yeah. where they had a shop there for the shoes. Well, the yeah. co-op was a great institution, wasn't it? It was a great there? institution, yes. And would, it, would nearly everybody in the community shop at the... What were the shopping habits? You know, would you, how much did people go into Stroud and how much would they just shop within, within Rockborough? We didn't have fridges. We didn't have... No you know things to keep food in so it was shopping every day yeah yeah and people get the groceries locally they used than to get the go to go